So we looked at many insertion functions for our linked list. Now we can use most of them to actually insert um, an element inside a linked list in such a way that it keeps the linked list sorted. Right, so that we always have a sorted linked list. So suppose we start with this linked list. We have two, seven and nine. Two is our root, nine is the end of the list, right? And we want to add the element, uh, let's say eight. So we want to add element eight. How should we proceed with this? How do we actually figure out where do we need to actually uh, place it inside our linked list? Well, we first have the node as usual, we just have to figure out where we need to link link it to. So we probably have to iterate over the list, right? We have to have an, an iteration that goes over and provides some checks for us. Um, those checks are going to be kind of interesting. Let's think for a second, if we want to add this uh, node inside our linked list, we first need to do what? We first need to change uh, this node the node that has the value seven, right? So we need to change this guy and we need to change the actual uh, next pointer of the new node that we have created to link to the next, uh, to the last node of the list, right? So we have to change these two. So how do we figure out where we have to place this node inside our linked list? Well, if you take a look at a comparison for every single element, you'll see a pattern. So if I compare eight with two, that's eight is higher than two. So I can say, I can place in here the higher than sign, right? Then if I take a look at seven, eight is again higher than seven. So that's fine. And if I compare eight with nine, eight is actually less than nine, less or equal than nine actually. So you'll notice that if I iterate uh, the linked list from left to right, we have to stop at the point where we find a node at which this comparison is true, at which the number that we want to add is less than or equal to the next node's value. And this, this is going to be in a, in a sorted linked list. Suppose the linked list is already sorted. Uh, there's only going to be one change of the true value of these comparisons, right? At only one point, we're going to change from this number being higher than all the rest and being less than or equal to than the one after it, after all these numbers, right? So suppose uh, in our iteration, current is currently the first node on our linked list. Well, at that iteration, we have to ask if seven is higher or equal than eight, or eight is less or equal than seven, which is false. So if it's false, we can continue moving forward with our current value. So you can say, okay, now is eight less or equal than nine? Did that, uh, did that change in uh, comparison occur? Well, yes, yes, it did. So if it did, then we stop, well, we stop the iteration and we modify whatever we have to modify, which is actually just changing this guy to point to our, uh, to point to our new node here. And then this guy point to current arrow next, which is the rest of our list. But in fact, we have done that already, right? Remember with the insert after a certain node function? Yeah, we have done that. So we can simply call insert after for this uh, node, right? So you can insert this node after this node. There's one single issue with all that. And that is when you have a number that is less than the first element, less than or equal than the first element inside our linked list. So if you have here, for example, one, well, at that point we have to treat it as a special case because we cannot look at a node that is before our root. The root is the first node of our linked list, remember? So all we have to do in that situation, we have to treat it as a special case and just simply uh, insert this 
value at the beginning of the uh, list. Right. And same thing happens if the list is empty. Right, we are going to just insert at the beginning because if the list is empty, there's no point in any comparisons. So this is this would be the end result if we want to add one, but this will be a special case. Now, before we get to the code, I have made a simple mistake in uh, previous videos where instead of saying exit four here, I did say return four, but you might notice that uh, this function itself only return, doesn't return anything. It's returning void. Uh, the compiler let me do that due to the fact that void uh, behind the scenes is actually going to return an integer either way, but that you shouldn't really do that. In 99.99% .99 of the cases, you really shouldn't do that. And that's just a mistake I have made. I meant to just exit out of the program with the error code uh, four here. And same thing with insert beginning. I, I changed it to be exit three. So let's get started with our uh, function. So I'm going to say here void insert sorted. I'm going to still get a double pointer to our root and the value that we want to add. All right. So we're going to first treat those two special cases. The first one is if the list is empty, right? So if our root, our root node holds the value null, then I want you to just insert the insert our value at the beginning and that's it that's all you have to do at that point because if the list is empty you can insert that as the first element inside the list that's no problem i, I can just return out of this uh, function right and also insert at the beginning if the first element is um higher or equal than our value, right? So if we have that, uh, we want to insert, for example, if our list starts with a two and we want to insert the value one, we're gonna treat the case here, right? And say here, or dereference root ones, right? That's gonna give us a what? A, a pointer to no, not a double pointer, just a pointer because we have already dereferenced it. Remember that double arrow thing? Yeah, so if you uh, dereference that double arrow once, you're only gonna get a, sim a simple arrow, it's just a pointer to no. And then you can just simply say uh, arrow x, and that's gonna actually access the value of the first element of the linked list. You can also say, if this is too complicated, it is kind of weird you can also say double dereference and you can say dot x if you think that uh, makes more sense to you since this is a double pointer if you do if you do dereference it twice you should get to the actual node and you can then say uh get the x uh member from that node right so you can do that and then uh we have to check if this guy is higher or equal than our value, right? Because if you want to insert um, one and the first element has the value two, that, that should be true. We should actually insert at the beginning. Same thing if the value is two and we want, and our beginning has the value two as well, right? It doesn't matter if you insert it after the first node or before, because they are the same thing. And in terms of, uh, whether or not they are sorted, they are going to be sorted, right? Okay, so those are the special cases relating to the first element of the list. Now we have to get to the actual algorithm, which is going to iterate over all our nodes. So simple iteration, as we did before, just we get a current pointer, which is going to be the first node, a pointer to the first node, a single pointer. And while our current, actually I'm going to say current arrow next is not null. So I'm going to get out this while loop with current being a being the last node of our list, right? Since if this sentence is false, that means that current arrow next is null. That means that that current is our last element of that linked list. Nice. And of course, we want to have the step be current equals current arrow next, right, as before. Nice. Now, 
what do we do here? Well, as I said in uh, this little drawing, we have to take a look, right? we have to take a look, since our current, for example, is here, we have to actually take a look at the value of nine. How do we do that? Well, you can access the value of nine. You can say C or current dot or arrow next, right? Current arrow next is going to be a pointer to our uh, next node. And if you say current arrow next arrow X, you're gonna get the actual nine here. So if I do current arrow next, right? This is our next pointer. And we know this guy is not null because of our while condition. Right? This guy is not null, so it's fine. We can dereference it again and get its value. So if the next uh, node's value is what? Is higher or equal than our value that we want to add, then stop right there. We want to add it right there, right at that position. So if this happens, So this happens, we can use our insert after function because, well, we have already implemented it. And if you uh, are new here, I suggest you actually watch the whole playlist from the beginning because we are now using uh, a lot of functions that we have talked about before, right? So insert after is simply going to insert after a certain node, the value that we give it. And what we want to do is insert after what? Well, since we have this situation here, we want to simply insert after our C, our, after our node that has the value seven. We don't want to insert after our node that has the value nine in that situation, right? So I'm gonna say here, after the current value, and just add, just insert the value that has, uh, that has been given to us by the caller. And after you have inserted a value in here, you can simply return because there's nothing else to do. All right, so let's try actually using this function. Let's see if I just want to add, uh, first I want to add just one element, just pass in the address of root, which is null, so it's an empty list. And let's say I want to add the value five. If I try to run this, I'm going to get five on the screen. That's nice. Now, what if I want to add the value four after I have five here? Well, if I try to run this, we get four and five. Right, so even though we have added them in uh, reverse, five and four, we got four and five inside our list. So uh, what happened is first the list was empty, right? And value was five, so it got added at the beginning. And then the, the list had only one element and that element happened to be five here and the value was four. So it also entered inside this if statement and it inserted that value at the beginning. Nice. Now, what if we want to add another number? Let's say we want to add the value um, one, right? Again, at the beginning. So if I try to run this, I'm going to get one, four, five. Nice. Now, as a last test, what if we want to add a value that is higher than all the other three here? So if you do, let's copy this and say seven, if I try to run this, oh, you'll notice that we don't get any value. We get just one, four, five. Our seven didn't get added anywhere. Well, why, why did that not work? The answer is actually very simple. So we iterated through the whole list and we never encountered this if condition to be true. Right, because what does that, what does this say basically? There should be a value inside our list that is higher or equal than the value that we want to add. But seven is never gonna be higher than any of these previous ones. So what do we do with such value? We have to add it at the end of our linked list, which we haven't done. So right after our while loop, we should we should add here, insert after our current value, the value. Because we know that after the while loop, current arrow next is equal to null, which means it's the, it's the last element. 
and to add at the end of the list all we have to do is call this insert after function to add it after our current which is our last element the value that we want right so now if i try to run this you'll notice that we get seven right at the end there so now that the algorithm is complete it works we can add as many numbers as we want and we're gonna continue uh, having a proper linked list that is always sorted this is why the example that i showed at the beginning uh had a sorted linked list right this algorithm is not going to work if you have a if you don't have a sorted linked list because uh, you'll notice that i iterate until all this until this condition flips but if the if the linked list is not sorted that condition keeps on flipping many many times so we don't know exactly where we have to uh, place it now one quick sort of improvement to our code here is well you might notice that this line of code is the same as this line of code right we're still adding current and the value is still the value that you actually got from here so can we make it so that we just have one of these instead of two well yes instead of having the function call and the return we can simply break out of the while loop so i'm gonna say here break and if we break out of this current stays the same right so then we get to this line of code which simply adds the element on the current position so the current position at which this guy was true with the proper value right because current doesn't change after we break out of the while loop so now if i try to run this you'll notice nothing has changed we still get the same sorted linked list but of course these are ordered in ascending order you can have them in descending order if you want you just have to change the uh, sign the comparisons here so i can change this to a less than or equal and less than or equal and if i try to run this i'm gonna get seven five four one right and really this condition can be generalized for anything you can even compare strings if you want your nodes can have not only just integers it can have uh, very complicated structures and you can order them with this uh, simple condition that you have here or here right these are the only places where you actually uh, check something related to the information of the linked list everything else everything else is uh, basically applicable to all the uh, linked lists with any sort of data type in them so i hope this was useful uh, if you do have any questions about sorted linked lists or really about linked lists in general do leave them down in the comments below or just find us on our discord server thank you so much for watching and take care